It's ironic, but I, this for my shorty September wrap up video, but I hope this video takes less time to film than it did to take me to read one of the worst books I've ever read. I'm not talking about that though in this video. Hey Booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March, and I wanted to come to you today and talk about my shorty September experience. And there's something I wanted to talk about, and it's to me it's the best part of Shorty September, but it probably won't be what you think. So let me get going. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Bert and Sean at Past Story Time for kind of hosting the event and putting out the information and the videos. Um, I loved watching their content along the way in the month of September. And uh, Heather from Expat Book Nerd also helped put together the prompt sheet. And I didn't really follow that. I didn't do the shorty September prompts and make everything fit or pick books that would fit into the prompts. What I basically did is I took shorty September to see if I could read short books and be able to read one a day. I did not, but my month was phenomenal. And I am thrilled with the progress that I made in reading the books off of my own shelf. To me, that's one of the best parts. It's actually not the best part I'm thinking of, but it's one of the best parts of Shorty September are the number of my own books that I read. So let me, before I show you some books and talk about those, let me give you some stats. I finished 24 books in the month of September. 21 of them were shorties. So I had three books that I read that I either started to read in August or um, I listened to one of them and then, oh, and then the other one was a buddy read towards the end of the month. So I had already kind of gotten to the point where I was going to be finishing the majority of shorties I was going to read. <laughs> so I still do have um, quite a few shorties that are still on my shelf that I was gonna pick from. I think I still have nine left and I will still continue to read out of that stack. and see how many I can finish from my own shelf. So when I started talking about my shorty TBR, I was mentioning number of pages. And had I read 1,000 pages a week, I would have been able to read 4,286 pages for the month. If I read 1,200 pages a week, I would have been able to read 5,130 pages per month for the month. I ended up reading 4,118 pages for the month of September for all 24 books. So for me, that's phenomenal. That's a phenomenal result of Shorty September. And uh, the fact, the simple fact that I could do it makes me feel so gratified and that I reached a goal and I loved it. I actually liked not reading a Shorty every single day because it did give me the feeling of I was reaching for the wrong goal. But I love being able to finish so many books from my own shelf. Now, what I want to do quickly is show you the five-star books that I discovered from Shorty September. So I have a little, I have a, a little stack here. I have, I had six five-star books for the month. Um, first, not first and really in, in order of anything, but just because they're in the order in my pile this way. Uh, I read Alice McDermott's That Night, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on the plots because I've already done that, but Alice McDermott is the author of Charming Billy, which I have yet to read, uh, but she over the years has become one of my favorite authors because of her writing style. And this was an interesting uh, plot uh, uh, surrounding a, a suburban uh, teenage romance and what happened when that went wrong and so this was a five-star read her style is mature and and uh, quiet and just artistic I love her writing the next one is Edith Wharton um, Edith Wharton's Ethan Frome uh, I read this many years ago in high school but I just finished it in September and absolutely loved it Edith Wharton is just a master and I loved the story of Ethan Frome. Uh, so many things to talk about. So timely. So universal. Um, I just loved it. This one is J.L. Carr's A Month in the Country. Uh, this is about a young man who comes back from World War I. And his job is to restore a covered up painting in an old country village church. 
And I just loved it. I love the story. I love the characters. I love the writing, uh, the setting. I love the setting in little old country villages. Um, the next one, this was one of the ones I just recently finished. This is Corregidora by Gail Jones. Uh, since the book Palmaris came out, Gail Jones has become a little bit of a controversial author based on the content of her book Palmaris. But this is her first novel, uh, which um, was sanctioned and somewhat discovered by Toni Morrison. But um, it's the, the story of a woman who is taught her family legacy of slavery and sexual abuse and rape and what that does to her um, her current life. Just an amazing book, incredible writing, uh, extremely difficult plot and content, but this is a modern classic and it's just incredible. And this one is not a shorty, but I finished it and this is Properties of Thirst by Marianne Wiggins. This was for my Critical Chicks book group pick and I just love Marianne Wiggins' writing. She also wrote Evidence of Things Unseen, which is one of my favorite books. Um, fun fact is she is the second wife of Salman Rushdie. She was married to him when he went into exile. And in the in the writing of this book, she suffered a massive catastrophic stroke and her daughter and her book editor helped her to complete it. She was just a few chapters away from the end and uh, they finished this book with her. And I just love her writing. It's just exceptional. And then the last five star read was the biggest surprise, I think, for me. And this is Amy Lowell, Selected Poems, edited by Honor Moore. I'm not a poetry fan and so I... I rarely read poetry, but this one I just absolutely loved. It's basically a collection of Amy Lowell's love poetry, and it was understandable for me, and many of the poems were very short. Actually, some of my favorites were the longest ones, but I just absolutely loved it. Okay, now, those were my five-star books, but what was my favorite part of Shorty September? The rabbit trails, the things that I discovered. I I can't believe that it was purely by happenstance or coincidence that I discovered all of these connections. And let me show you how that happened. Now, the, the poetry by Amy Lowell. Her name is familiar to me. Uh, Lowell is a, is a city in Massachusetts. But Amy Lowell as a poet, um, I didn't really know much about her before I picked up this volume. And this was, I purchased this through Library of America. And, I, you know, okay. But her last name kind of struck a memory. And, like, I, I recognize that name. And she was an early, um, late 19th century, early 20th century American poet. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if she's a... a a relative of Robert Lowell. So that was, that's where that brought me. Now, this is Robert Lowell. He is, this particular book is Setting the River on Fire, a study of genius, genius, mania, and character by K. Redfield Jameson. This is Robert Lowell, the mid-century American poet, and he is, he is famous, infamous maybe, not just for his poetry, but for his mental health and his personal life, basically. So I started to think, okay, both of these Lowells are poets. Are they related? Were they related? And of course, she would have been much older than Rob, Amy would have been much older than Robert. Could they have been related? When I start started looking into it, I realized they were they were some sort of cousins. So they were part of the same family. Robert Lowell descended from the Lowell family in Massachusetts. Um, and so I thought that's really interesting. Robert Lowell as a person was very interesting and he was also a contemporary of Sylvia Plath. They lived in the same area in Massachusetts. And then I started to look into Robert Lowell because in the reading of um, Red Comet and in the study of Sylvia Plath's life, I started to notice personal connections there as well. And the two other books that I picked, two of the other books I picked for Shorty September without really having any prior knowledge, were these two. Great Granny Webster by Caroline Blackwood and Sleepless Nights by Elizabeth Hardwick. And I didn't think anything of it, thought nothing at all of it. 
And so once I started looking into Amy Lowell and Robert Lowell being part of the same family, I started reading about Robert Lowell and something, I remembered something and I thought Robert Lowell was married to Gene Stafford and they, because of his alcoholism, they before, right before they got married, he was the cause of a uh, car accident that permanently disfigured Gene Stafford's face. And they got married and she had to have, it, her nose and her cheekbone was crushed in this accident, were crushed. And uh, they were married and it was apparently a very tempestuous, difficult, conflict-ridden marriage. I can't understand why. Um, but from very early on, Robert Lowell suffered from a mental illness and they look back now and say he had bipolar disorder, which at the time was called manic depressive um, illness or ma manic depressive disorder. And he self-medicated with alcohol. But Jean Stafford is his first wife. And I took notes as to when they were married. Um, Robert Lowell was married to Jean Stafford from 1940 to 1948. And when I realized that, I also thought, I think I have one of her books, and I do. I have uh, Jean Stafford's Boston Adventure. Now, this is clearly not a shorty. Um, this book is Growing Up in a Fishing Village North of Boston Between the Wars. Sony, a child of immigrants, is so poor that she must sleep on a pallet made of old coats and comforters. She can only dream of the feather beds and perfume soap to be found in the great city across the bay. In the summers, while helping her mother clean rooms in a shoreside hotel, she keeps company with the austere and fascinating Miss Pride. Years pass, and Sony, now the caretaker of her fragile mother, receives an invitation from Miss Pride to move to Beacon Hill in Boston and her new personal secretary and be her new personal secretary. Salvation, she thinks, is at hand. In Boston, Sony does come to know a new and broader world, one in which she mingles with both blue bloods and Luce European refugees, and yet her troubles she discovers are hardly over. So Robert Lowell married another uh, writer, author, intellectual, and um, was married to Jean Stafford for, what was that, eight years, 1940 to 1948. But then when I started reading more into Robert Lowell, their marriage didn't last. And he, knew, he married after Jean Stafford, um, Elizabeth Hardwick, who wrote Sleepless Nights, which I read. And this was not the best book for me. It was not very successful for me. I didn't enjoy it. Sleepless Nights is basically a series of vignettes or, or small paragraphs or small moments in time, which w it reminds the reader of a woman's insomnia, of the thoughts that come into her head in the middle of the night or when she can't sleep. And this was written... Um, not in response to, because it didn't really address the dynamics between Robert Lowell and Hardwick, who was a literary critic and an essayist and a writer. But Robert Lowell was married to Elizabeth Hardwick from 1949 to 1972, which is his longest relationship. So they were married for 23 years and had a daughter together. Um, uh, I would assume that that relationship was poor, uh, tempestuous, conflict-ridden, uh, of course, ridden with his alcoholism, his mental health, his mental illness. Uh, he was in and out of psychiatric hospitals, uh, most notably McLean Hospital in Massachusetts. Uh, he, I believe, was dealing with electroshock therapy, and back then it was not as advanced as it is now. It's not called that anymore but he was also taking lithium for manic depressive illness. Sometimes it worked, a lot of times it did not. He relapsed many, many, many times and used alcohol as self-medication. And I do believe that Robert Lowell and Sylvia Plath were in the same hospital at the same time more than once. So they did know each other or knew of each other. So Elizabeth Hardwick was his longest marriage and he left her, I believe the marriage just fell apart, in 1972. And in 1972, Robert Lowell married Caroline Blackwood, the author of Great Granny Webster. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know the 
details. I believe there was an affair, or I believe right after he divorced hard work, he married Lockwood. Not sure what the details of that were. I can only make assumptions, but it wasn't good. Um, so he had these three wives over those many years, and I just had no idea that when I picked up these three shorties for Shorty September that there were links all over the place. And it was just so fascinating to find those links and draw the links. And the, and the only way I did it was out of Amy Lowell's poetry, thinking, I wonder if Robert Lowell is related to her. And lo and behold, he is. And I remember the story about the car accident that disfigured Gene Stafford. And then when I started to look into his other relationships, I realized he was married to Hardwick for so long. And then very quickly after leaving her, he married Caroline Blackwood. Now, Robert Lowell died in 1977 of a heart attack in a taxi. Now, the story goes that he was he had left Blackwood and was going back to Hardwick, but he never made it because he died in the taxi on the way there. She remained a, a confidant and a friend of Lowell's. However, after their relationship dissolved, he wrote a very scathing uh, poetry collection or a collection of letters where he revealed so many personal details. And when this book did come out, uh, critics of this book were surprised that she didn't say anything about that collection. I believe it was called The Dolphin, which I want to procure and read. So really interesting stuff. One more link to all of this. The author of this book is Kay Redfield Jameson. And Kay Redfield Jameson is a psychiatrist and an author. But... She's also the author of many more books, including this one, An Unquiet Mind, A Memoir of Moods and Madness. As a psychiatrist and a medical doctor and a writer and an academic, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder or manic depressive disorder, and I think maybe another one or two other um, chronic mental illnesses. And so this is all really fascinating to me. Um, and it's kind of... Robert Lowell at the center of the uh, the drama of these many lives. So I thought that was so fascinating. All the links that I found, the further reading that I want to do, the further investigating, and it was all because of Shorty September. So thank you, Sean and Bert, um, for driving this discovery, for driving the reason why I picked up all these books. And I was just blown away by the connections, the links, the fascination, the further research I get to do, and the further books I get to read. So that's it for me for today. Let me know if you all participated at all in reading short books or Shorty September. Let me know what you think of any of the connections that I found or any of the five-star reads that I showed you. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.